going to hold on to it. Fitting that number zero has the basketball as the final three seconds tick off. It was his day as he tied the freshman scoring record with 35. Broke the freshman record for three-pointers in a game with eight. And took the Blue Devils to a nine-point win on the road. 76 to 67 is the final score as Jared McCain was spectacular. The Blue Devils are now 20 and five overall. They improved to 11 and three. ACC play they've won their fourth in a row well it was great to get win number 20 at Florida State they're such a dangerous team especially at home with the way they pick you up full court they switch everything in the half court so they make you play a lot of one-on-one -on -one and you have to manufacture make plays and then on offense they're explosive in transition you know they force us into 17 turnovers and we were able to uh, get back and you know, make sure they didn't convert too much off of those. But I thought overall, our guys had amazing toughness. Uh, Jared had just a all time special performance, you know, with the 35 points. But what I loved with him was just the way he competed and, and his defense was off the charts. And that's something maybe Sports Center isn't gonna show, but he played a complete game. And really he carried us with his will to win and his competitive spirit. by Jeremy Roach, a bounce pass ahead for McCain. On the right of three, got it! Jared McCain dialed in! And the Blue Devils lead by 10 at halftime. 44 to 34, how about 25 for the freshman out of Sacramento? Well, during the game against Florida State, you know, when Jared, uh, you know, he had a couple early threes, but then maybe it was one of the step backs he had in transition. Uh, you're just thinking, how can we get him the ball? Except it's hard to do that. Uh, it's not a game you can drop plays as much because of the way they switch and they take things away. Uh, but a couple of times, I just told him, go get the ball. <laughs> just go get the ball and, and make something happen. But he just uh, he just made plays. You know, it's just a special thing. I think you you definitely realize it in, as you're coaching them and as you're into the game, but you're also just thinking about the next possession. You're thinking about the team as a whole, uh, but clearly getting the ball to Jared in that game was uh, a smart thing to do. Up top, McCain open from three, and he rattles it home. And the Blue Devils draw even 16 and a piece. Three on three, gonna wait for help, send it to the right, McCain. How about another three? Got it again! McCain is feeling it. He's in a double figures, and the Blue Devils have the lead. 19 to 16 for the first time today. Caleb Blakes is into the game for the first time as McCain jumps up again. Oh my goodness! McCain unconscious, his fourth three, and the Blue Devils lead by six. The stretch when it was 16-11, they were beating us. You know, that's that's a critical time, halfway through the first half, and that's where Jared just, just decided, all right, this is, I'm gonna kick this into another gear right now. And uh, he had three threes, we went on 11-0 run, uh, and that gave us separation. And we really didn't look back from there as far as having, having the lead, but uh, it speaks to his mindset. And he just, he's wired to compete at the highest level. It doesn't matter where we are, it doesn't matter who we're playing. And that was just a great example of that. Roach feeding to Filipowski on the right baseline. Spun by George all the way in for a right hand punch. Flip says, take that. A chance to add to a 13 point lead. It's McCain all the way in. Oh, he punched it with the right hand. My goodness, timeout Miami. Flip trying to get the loose ball. It's Mitchell out of there with it. Three on two, Proctor to the left. Roach, three ball up and in. Jeremy Roach with his third three. He's the first into double figures, and the lead is 20. 
84 to 55 the final score. The Blue Devils blast the Hurricanes by 29, picking up their 21st win of the season. Now 21 and 5 overall, 12 and 3 in the ACC. They pull into a tie atop the standings with North Carolina. In general, people can draw early conclusions about who people are, who teams are. Just as with teams, all along we've t talked about privately, just getting better in the whole season. And, you know, we want to be at our best in February and March. And I think we're on an upswing. Uh, I think we've continued to get better. I think these guys have shown incredible toughness. With things not going their way, you find out about people the way they respond. And uh, all these guys, man, they've responded at different times throughout the seasons, whether it be setbacks, whether it be losses. And they've just kept working, kept believing. And uh, we need to continue to do that. But to me, it's, it's, it's about their character. It's about the makeup of the guys we have in that, in that locker room. Duke All Access is brought to you by Gatorade. Greatness isn't about what you've done, it's about what you do next. By Continental Tire, the smart choice in tires. And by Coke Zero Sugar. They say Coke Zero is irresistibly tasty. Does that make it the best Coke ever? Find out for yourself. Feel confident Continental is the smart choice in tires. Can they handle extremes? Yep. Tested from the Texas desert to near the Arctic Circle. Really? Really. Anything for the guy who finds that one pothole? Yeah. Road hazard coverage has your back. For real? Absolutely. Were they made by like a bajillion engineers? Well, closer to a hundred. Continental. Welcome to the smart choice in tires. Every year, thousands of athletes disappear in clutch moments due to falling hydration levels. I used to go missing all the time. I let everyone down. I even let Shannon Sharp down. Um, yeah, you let me down. They've been told how you feel yourself doesn't matter. That electrolytes are all the same. Then just like that, they're gone. Get yourself back in the game. Get yourself a Gatorade. Could be the difference between dominating and disappearing. Gatorade. Rehydrate, replenish, refuel. Create a backyard that's out of this world. Right now, save $30 on the GTA 26 handheld battery pruner. Real steel. Find yours. I need to try it first. Yeah. What's up, Duke fans? Jay Lucas here with Jared McCain. We're going to break down some of his film from the year. He's one of the best freshman guards in the country and just get his perspective on why. All right, Jared, first we're going to watch some of your drives and just talk about some of your finishing. You know, a big part of what we told you, you know, when you got here and some of the things we wanted you to do, a big thing in college is playing off two feet. For sure. You know, in high school, it's not as big. Uh, what have you... What has that meant to you here early, just from your growth from your first game to where we are now? I think I found out real early that you can't go off one, especially right. in the early games. I mean, it just gets either swatted or taken away from you. So right. uh, playing off two, having balance, uh, it's been huge for me in these past few games. Yeah. You know, the one thing with playing off two feet, like right here, you know, is just the defense in college comes over so much faster. Yeah. So it just gives you that vision and that power to finish. What, uh, what was the one adjustment, like, you know, playing Pitt rather than playing like a Charlotte or something. What was something that you saw that really made you really buy into it? Um, probably just the length. I think the length yeah. gets like crazy when you get to the basket. I mean, Pitt has uh, the two twins that are like seven feet, so I, I know how to shot pick him, come off two, and um, make the read off that because the length is way larger in college. Right. And, you know, part of it, being a smaller guard, what some people would consider that, 
It's just your creativity. I'm a big guard. <laughs> I got you. Your creativity where you get in the paint, mm -hmm. you know, some of your pivots, some of your shot fakes. Have you always had that, or is it something you've developed since you've been here? You know, what's your take on that? Yeah, I think I've always kind of had it. I mean, since co since high school, I feel like I did play off two, but yeah. it was definitely easier to play off one also. So now it's more like it's off two almost every time. Yeah. Um, Unless it's, wide, unless it's a wide open layup, which doesn't happen often in college. So, but I think it's something I've always had. You know, one of the things um, that you've done a really good job of is you starting with the initial fake. I think it's one of your best weapons. Since you shoot the ball so well, yeah. people have to react to your shot fake, um, especially on your drives to open up the drives and create the drives. I think it's, you know, one of the best things you do that you've developed uh, throughout the year. Uh, and then your rebounder, I mean, your rebounding, I think, for a guard under 6'5", since 08, is one of the best ever since then. Yeah, um, yeah. You know, with rebounding, is it something you always done or kind of what is it? And, you know, for us, we were smart enough to figure out here, <laughs> I guess, recently to let yeah. you crash offensively you. and not get you back. Thank you. Thank uh, you. And it's really made a big difference for us. But what, what kind of – have you always had a knack to rebound or what's kind of yeah. your – your philosophy in that? I feel like, I mean, a lot of guards on offense don't really crash. A lot yep. of coaches tell them to get back. So yep. I'm able to kind of, like, with Flip and Marker, they're, they're block, blocking out people, and then I'm yep. able to kind of roam and just kind of get the ball. But I kind of credit my soccer legs um, to carve out some space. Soccer legs. Um, I like yeah, that. And my big thighs, you know what I'm saying? Yep. Just, I'm just big bone, big body, big guard. Um, so I'm just able to carve out space to block out and get rebounds. Yeah. And, you know, I think it's one thing that's really changed. I mean, it's really changed our team. And some of the plays you've made, um, just like this where you can rebound and one of the best things we always talk about is guard rebounding yeah. when a guard can rebound and push the ball to create offense for himself and for others uh, is a big it's a big key to getting great shots uh, especially early in the shot clock yeah. and then you know you made some of the biggest plays um, here recently in these games down the stretch where you really came up with some big offensive rebounds that have kind of I mean changed the game for us um, yeah. You know, actually, and then we'll kind of get to these clips, but, you know, one of the things that really happened um, in the Clemson game, yeah. you know, you had two of the biggest rebounds I think I've seen in a while where you kind of came back behind Hunter and kind of took the ball, and it changed the whole game for us. You yeah, know, I, I thought it was one of uh, our defining moments so yeah, far. Yeah. You know I what I mean? Thanks for letting me go to the offensive boards. Yeah, yeah. you know, it's, it's, it's coaching. We get there eventually. <laughs> um, and, you know, then you're passing. You mm -hmm. know, I think as the season's going on, you develop a little bit <laughs> more ability to pass. You know, I'm trying to say it in the nicest way. We ask you I'm to score Michael a lot. Por I'm not Michael Porter Jr., but... You you're know, close. So. But, you know, you've done a good job, <laughs> at least, of getting in the paint. And part of playing off two feet, yeah, you're able you to make the right score, read. Yeah. is able to make, make the right read. Exactly. Have more time for and, it. And, um, <clears throat> you know, the one thing that we've done with you, you know, that I didn't see you do a lot in high school, but uh, putting you in ball screens. Mm -hmm. You know, putting you in ball screens and, and the reads you've been able to make and you've gotten better at this, like this pass to flip, you know, hitting him when he's open. I think that's one of the things you've also developed and unlocked a new part of your game. Mm -hmm. uh, another one, getting down here, like we said, playing off two feet. Uh, you know, you, the way we shoot it this year uh, with our guards is yeah. something that's really big. So that you, play, I remember that place, uh, Sewell, uh, yep. I heard Sewell say corner. So I, I remember I jumped and I was like, like a little corner. I said, right. Germ. Yeah. <laughs> you know, with you, Caleb, Jeremy, Tyrese, um, Flip, <coughs> just the spacing on the court when yeah. we can open up these reads and you just making these passes uh, has been good for us as well. And then attacking in transition, you know, like we talked about earlier, when you rebound and the way you rebound, as good a rebounder you are, it's one of our best offenses when you can rebound and really push and transition to kind of open up this attack. And then also, also, I'll give you a little bit of praise right here. You're one of the best transition three-point shooters I've ever coached. It's my favorite shot. And you can tell because yeah. of the way you shoot it. And it's one of our favorite shots because it's just backbreakers. Yeah. You know, these shots that within the course of the game um, just are demoralizing. You can see it right here, this kid from um, this kid from Syracuse. As soon as this ball goes in, you can just see his reaction. Yeah. You know, look at all of them. These are the ones that are good. They're just daggers. And then to start the game, it gives the team confidence. Yeah. Like, this was one of our big reasons we started so well against Pitt. That shot right there. It gets us going. It gives the team life. Um, and it's one of the biggest things you can do. And then just like we talked about attacking when you're getting to the rim with the ball. Could have um, dunked that one. You could have. Yeah. And then this was three right here. Is this something you always done, or is it something you develop more later? I feel like um, I've always done it. When I played yeah. in high school, I had a point guard, Donovan Dent. He always found me in transition, yep. so it was pretty easy. I just run the floor and 
he'd always find me. So I think I've always kind of worked on it, and it's become my favorite shot. Do you like it more off the dribble, or do you like when it's passed? I like. I mean, it's my favorite when I hit it off the dribble. Yeah, yeah, yeah. That's pretty just good. Like that, yeah. But you can just see. Look at the life that gets all the tea. Yeah. And the grand camera. Uh, it's just one of those shots that, when you can make it, it just it it, it, it can it's change the game. Too. Yeah, it is. Yeah, it is. Every year, thousands of athletes disappear in clutch moments due to falling hydration levels. I used to go missing all the time. I let everyone down. I even let Shannon Sharp down. Um, yeah, you let me down. They've been told how you feel yourself doesn't matter. That electrolytes are all the same. And just like that, they're gone. Get yourself back in the game. Get yourself a Gatorade. Could be the difference between dominating and disappearing. Gatorade, rehydrate, replenish, refuel. Duke's new century cries out for a university where the drive to discover is not hemmed by disciplinary logics. Where philosophers work side by side with physicians and physicists. Where nurses find inspiration in narrative theory. Where mechanical engineers team up with marine biologists or musicians. I believe Duke will continue to be that university together. When you're injured, you should not be ignored by the insurance company. We know the amount seems low, but this is what your case is worth. Just click here. We understand you can't work. Click the bottom. You want more. Call a law firm that will fight for the justice you deserve. You weren't going to click that, were you? Tell them you mean business. Call the law offices of James Scott Farron on the Hurt Line right now. You can have live college sports in your hand this year with the brand new Varsity Network app. Hear live, play by play, and keep up with your favorite teams and audio broadcasts no matter where you are with this free new app. Be sure to download the Varsity Network app today. Duke Basketball 360, presented by Continental Tire, the smart choice in tires. It'll be Roach with five and four across the court. Two seconds now in the corner, fed it to Flip, forced it up, got it! At the buzzer! And the Blue Devils will lead at halftime. From 10 feet out on the left, what a find from Jeremy Roach. A staple in our program over the years has been being able to close half strong and then start second half strong. You know, we spent a lot of time and energy this year talking to our guys about it, working on it in practice, and then teaching it during the games. The, the job that we did against Florida State to close the first half was terrific. You know, obviously it ends with Jared hitting the three, which was a, a big time shot, but it was the defense to, the last couple of minutes to be able to stretch that lead and then you're going into halftime up 10. That's a big difference as opposed to it being a one possession or a two possession game. So really proud of the growth with our guys for that and we need to keep that going. So this was a critical moment in our game you get a chance to get a stop and then a potential score. And it couldn't have worked out better. And Jared makes a unique decision to pull up in this case. And I'm happy he did. So you go into halftime up 10, as opposed to them scoring and it's potentially five or four. And that's a huge swing and a big deal in terms of us being in a position to win in the second half. Same thing here. Great execution, they scored, and for us to come back and respond, Jeremy makes a great pass to flip. It was great execution. It's a play that we've practiced for end of half, and to go up with the lead at halftime is important. Same thing, Jeremy felt two guys on the ball, and he makes a really simple, good pass to flip. Okay, Boston College here. This is a great two for one opportunity. And you know, here Jeremy does a good job. He shoots with over 40 seconds to go. We score and now we need to stop. And we come back down and Flip makes a heads up play to get a block. 
And this is growth for us. Like you could have tried to score there, but we wanted to make sure we got the last shot of the half. So we go in with the lead and we end up not scoring, but good execution of the two for one. We just need to do a better job in that last play to get a shot off. Okay, this is one of the biggest plays really of the season. Sean tips it out to flip and then we get an offensive kick out and Jeremy has great poise to hit a three at the buzzer and we go up six and that gave us again, uh, now we have a, a three possession lead. Going into halftime, we get a chance to regroup. That was big time execution. Okay, right here, again, going into the end of the half. The offensive rebound by TJ to give us a bucket. It gave us uh, something to build on for that second half. Here's a little bit of a different situation because it's not two for one. It's later in the shot clock, so we just need to get a good possession. And Flip had the awareness to set a screen for Jared. Pops and hits a three. And now we need to get one stop. And we come back down and we play really good defense. Jeremy stays on Henson and we come away with five guys rebounding. So this is a tighter window for a two for one. So we want the best shot we can possibly get unless there's something early. And Jared has a great drive, gets the foul, so now we have the opportunity for another shot. And I love our huddle, now we're talking about the situation. We come down in Jalen's awareness to get a deflection. Now we have the opportunity to score on the other end. And now Mark hits the free throw and we go into the lead. It's the first time we had the, the lead uh, for the entire time in the first half. One of the things for this team we've, we've talked a lot about is how to get separation through the course of a game. And uh, if you go back, especially the first part of the year, like look, there's gonna be some games as you play some really good teams, it's hard to get separation, but you always play the right way where you're controlling what you can in order to get that. And so are you talking on your switches? Are you getting back and making a team play in the half court? Are you finishing plays with rebounds? And if you add those up through the course of a game, you can get separation. And so for the, the, the fact that we've led for the majority of these games, including all of the second half, that's, that's growth. And that's what you wanna see from a young group, especially in now February leading into March. And we need to build on it. I, I still think there's a lot of things we can do better in areas we can improve, but that is growth over the last couple of weeks, learning how to keep a lead, extend a lead, and then protect a lead at the end of the game. The buzzer beater, that moment when time stands still, our collective breath held as the ball hovers above the rim. But almost a third of those shots were set up by a passer who made the smart choice. Throwing an assist takes trust, IQ, and total confidence in your decision. And the greatest one? My pass to Leitner in 92 wasn't too bad. Continental, the smart choice in tires. These mascots represent some of the most heated rivalries in college sports. What could possibly bring them all together? Everyone agrees on the best team in smart home security. CPI. team wherever they take you. With over 30 hotel brands, Marriott Bonvoy has a brand for every kind of fan. We still believe in the American dream. A dream filled with promise. A dream filled with commitment to our neighbors and our communities. Where we work hard and succeed together. Where we take care of those who serve for us. SRS delivers with integrity and purpose. Through the fastest growing family of independence in the country. Company by company. Person by person. Rooftop by rooftop. SRS Distribution delivers more than building products. SRS delivers dreams.
Basketball has been great to me, and for me to get in this Hall of Fame is like unbelievable. And thank you very much. Well, the basketball world lost a true legend and one of the great people and coaches to ever been in our game, and that's Lefty Drizel. And uh, Coach Drizel also was a great player at Duke, and I had the pleasure of knowing him, but also hearing many, many stories from Coach K about the impact that Lefty had at Duke, coaching against him, uh, just the competitor that he was. But for me, it was more about how down to earth he was, you know, just a very, uh, just a person who had great humility, uh, clearly knew as much about the game as anybody. And you think about the impact that he left, not only at Duke, but the other stops along the way. You think about his impact at Maryland. Uh, he coached Jay Lucas's dad, you know, one of the great players, you know, John Lucas. But it's a sad day, but also to be able to reflect on the impact that he had. It's really as good as anybody that's been in the sport when you think about the combination of playing and coaching. Let's be smart now and just hold them. We were down like this last night. We came back to one. Let's go. Let's go. Let's go. Let's play together. Well, Lefty was a lifer. He loved the game. He loved everything about the game, and he was an innovator. He helped improve the game, advance the game. He was iconic, uh, and he had some of the best teams and best players to ever play our sport. And he did it over five decades. You know, he, uh, he was always hungry, enthusiastic, and he's a great guy. In addition to that, he and his wife, Joyce, were married for 70 years. When Mickey and I came into the league, you know, obviously I admired Lefty and was amazed <laughs> by who he was. But uh, Joyce, behind the scenes, really made uh, Mickey and I very welcome. And Mickey and Joyce became lifelong friends from that. And Lefty and I were were special friends. I, I loved Lefty. Those who were blessed to have been his friends will remember him forever and miss him forever.